Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm Mystical, and today I'll be bringing you the latest in AR and VR news. There is a massive update for all standalone headsets, not just Quest, and I think a lot of you are seriously going to enjoy this. We have V53 change logs, and we have a confirmation about the Quest 3. With that, and tons more coming up. Let's jump right into it. First, let's talk about the Quest 3, as I believe thousands of you guys are very excited for the new headset that will be coming later this year. And I have even better news for you, as Mark Zuckerberg has said that Meta's next headset will be quote-unquote accessible for lots of people, which is fantastic because the Quest Pro was definitely not that. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg delivered remarks during his company's quarterly earnings call reaffirming his commitment to the Metaverse vision. A narrative has developed that we're somehow moving away from focusing on the Metaverse vision, so I just want to say up front that that's not accurate. We've been focusing on both AI and the metaverse for years now, and we will continue to focus on both. Now, what's interesting here is yes, that was actually a narrative that Meta was moving away from focusing on the metaverse and instead focusing on artificial intelligence. However, here Mark Zuckerberg says otherwise. The two areas are also related. A breakthrough in computer vision was what enabled us to ship the first standalone VR device. Mixed reality is based on a stack of AI technologies for understanding the physical world and blending it with digital objects. And I mean, this this is all very true. AI does help with virtual reality, and certain aspects of AI are certainly going to make augmented reality a lot better. Now, if you guys want to read the full thing, it's actually quite long, so I'll leave a link for you down below. We're going to move on to the part where Mark Zuckerberg talks about the new Quest 3. In the near term, we've reached a few milestones that I think are worth calling out. More than a billion meta avatars have now been created. Since last year, the number of titles on the Quest store, with at least $25 million in revenue, has has doubled. More than half of Quest's daily active users now spend more than an hour using their device. The next milestone is that we're gearing up to launch our next generation consumer virtual and mixed reality device later this year. We launched the Quest 2 almost three years ago at this point. It was a very big step for VR, and we're really excited to show the world the improvements and technology we've developed since then at a price point that will be accessible for lots of people. This confirms a lot of things. The fact that the Quest 3 will be shipping later Later this year. Even though we already kind of knew that. There was already a lot of leaks on this, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned it a bunch of times. However, this reaffirms that. The price tag was always something people were worried about, as the headset will supposedly be more expensive than the Quest 2, but less expensive than the Quest Pro. A lot of people were saying $400, $500, and a lot of people are thinking it might be $600. However, Mark Zuckerberg saying that it will be accessible to a lot more people is making me think that it will certainly be closer to the Quest 2 than the Quest Pro. But let let me know your opinions on this one down below. Are you excited for the Quest 3 launch, and how much do you think it's going to cost? As we're getting closer and closer now, it's going to be interesting to see people's opinions and see who was the closest. Either way, next piece of news. Qualcomm has just announced a major milestone, and now they can use super resolution to boost resolution in virtual reality. Virtual reality devices utilize high resolutions and frame rates to create a sense of presence and immersion. Creating immersive content at these high resolutions and frame rates can be taxing on performance, system and wireless bandwidth, and power. At Qualcomm Technologies, we've been exploring solutions to address these challenges, and super resolution techniques is one such technique that can be beneficial. Recently, Qualcomm has worked with the creator of Virtual Desktop to bring their new Snapdragon game super resolution into wireless PC VR games streaming, boosting the quality of PC VR to HMD split rendering. VR gamers who are only able to render at the lower supported resolutions will now be able to upscale their favorite PC VR titles to the highest available resolution settings, like ultra slash godlike, on the headset. And they can also take advantage of synchronous space warp to help further reduce the VR-ready PC requirements. This will be available soon on multiple headsets with their Snapdragon XR2 platform and its Qualcomm Adreno GPU. So while they focus mostly on virtual desktop here, which is only fair, that is the first application that has taken this on, this will actually be available on all standalone headsets utilizing the XR2 GPU. You can think of Snapdragon Game Super Resolution as somewhat of an FSR for virtual reality on standalone devices. In case you guys don't know what FSR is, that's AMD's technology. It allows you to run the game at a lower resolution and then upscale it to look as if it was in a higher one. This one is great as it works with basically any device out 
there, including older Nvidia cards, not just AMD cards. Meaning that if you have an older computer, you can try running a game with FSR and seeing if it would run better. This means that standalone games will now be able to run at a lower resolution, but then be upscaled to look as if they were running at a higher one, causing less stress on the GPU itself, with hopefully very minimal degradation to the user. Which is absolutely fantastic. Again, this is nothing new on computers. Upscaling techniques have been used for a very, very long time now, but for this to be used on standalone headsets is a major breakthrough. It could allow for games to be much larger, have much more fidelity, and just overall be much more intensive in the way they run. And I don't think I need to mention all the benefits this will have for PC VR users that are running VR on, say, under minimum requirements. This should help you massively. In case you guys are developers, or in case you want to read more into detail about this, I will leave a link to Qualcomm's blog post down below, as this goes heavily into detail on exactly what it uses, the key features, and a lot more. I am very, very excited for this, and this shows that we can bring a lot more out of these standalone devices. And again, this isn't just meta-compatible. This should work on any Qualcomm XR2 headset out there, which is incredibly impressive. Now let's move on to the V53 changelog. We've already talked about V53, however we never had an official changelog and we didn't know exactly what features are coming in this release. But now we have the official changelog from Meta, and with it comes some really interesting features, as the Quest can now update games during shutdown, which was a feature that was asked for quite a bit, and the Quest Pro gets support for Wi-Fi 6E. The update moves previously experimental advanced camera settings into full release, offering easy to find options for better recording quality or image stabilization. This is actually something I used quite a bit, but it was in experimental settings until now. Meta notes that there are trade-offs to consider when using various options. This is only fair. The update also adds a toggle for update before powering off that could dramatically speed up future visits in VR by getting you the latest versions of any game as you power off the headset, which is great as you don't want to be sitting in VR waiting for a game to finish updating before you can launch it. The MetaQuest Pro now supports Wi-Fi 6E, so headset owners with Wi-Fi networks that are using the 6 GHz band can now take full advantage of it. Virtual Desktop's creator has also confirmed that the app can take full advantage of that Wi-Fi 6E mode. The V53 update also includes some other changes, including the new supervision tools for parents and teens that extend to browser content filtering, as well as laying down mode, which was heavily requested in the past. If you guys want to check out the full video on this update and me showcasing the features, check it out right up here. But we're going to move on to the next piece of news. The PSVR 2 will soon reach local retailers, which is absolutely fantastic. This was an announced on Twitter by PlayStation. The PSVR 2 will soon be in stock at local retailers, in addition to direct.playstation.com. Check your local retailer for availability. Since launching in February, the PSVR 2 was only available through PlayStation Direct, excluding countries where Sony hasn't yet opened Direct. Spotted across to UK retailers, Game is offering pre-registration to confirm your interest, while Shop 2 provides a more general page highlighting hardware specs and available games. It's not appearing with online US retailers yet, but that could soon change. This will hopefully allow more people to jump into VR with the PSVR 2, as the headset is being loved by many, and it seems to be a fantastic device. Hopefully, I'll get to try it out very soon, as uh, there are some big changes happening on the channel. I keep you guys posted on the Discord. I know people personally that would prefer to buy in-store rather than buying online, and a lot of people just straight up wouldn't buy the device because you had to buy it online people would be waiting to be able to buy it in store for warranty reasons and things like that. So this could hopefully help more people buy the device. But that is going to be it for today's video. Some really large pieces of news today, some longer segments in this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord, check out our Reddit down below. I would love to see you discussing the topics from today's video on those platforms. Thank you so, so much to all the lovely names going off to my right. Those guys are my Patreons and they are helping me out so, so much at this moment in time so seriously much love to you guys and thank you to anyone else supporting the channel by any other means and as usual if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead dig my bell and see you again in the next video peace